the next plant in our series is going to be jewelweed. Well, this weekend, there's a show up in Michigan. Many of you know that I have a few antique cars, and one is a 1959 Lincoln, and there's a Lincoln show up here in right by uh, Kalamazoo, Michigan. So we decided to take a ride up here. On these little mini vacations, we always like to take some side trips. And one of the side trips, there was a park here of uh, historic bridges. So we pulled off, took a tour, bridges like this one right here, and we noticed some plants on the side of, of many of the paths. So we got the idea, why not film one of the plants in our series? And so we noticed a nice patch of jewelweed here. So I thought this would be a good place to, uh, to, to film that. So let's walk over here and I'll tell you a little bit about jewelweed, its uses, and uh, what it's really known for. The plant jewelweed also goes by the name Touch Me Not. That's because in the fall, it has little seed pods, and if you touch them, they'll shoot their seeds out at you, maybe three or four feet. That's the way they disperse their seeds. A lot of the books will say that the seeds explode. Well, I'm expecting fireworks, and it doesn't do that. They just kind of shoot out a few feet at you. So to help disperse the plant, if you happen to find a jewelweed plant, you can go by and touch them, and they'll just kind of shoot the seeds out at you. But Touch Me Not or Jewelweed is the name of the plant. Right here all around me, um, in the early spring, uh, the, the leaves are definitely edible. They're edible this time of year too, but they taste better in the early spring. Uh, the plant typically grows within about 50 feet of poison ivy, and that's what the plant is really known for. It does have edible qualities, but the medicinal qualities of being the antidote to poison ivy is what people really know the plant for. Uh, what you do with the plant if you do get yourself into poison ivy, simply you take the stem of the plant and you would just break off part of the stem. You would discard the leaves and any of the side stems. You want the main stem of the plant. This is what you're looking for. And you just bend it up like this. and rub it between your hands. And you'll notice your hands are going to get a little moist. Not quite like aloe, but they will get kind of wet and moist. Now that's what you want to rub wherever you touch poison ivy. So on your arms, your legs, wherever you touch poison ivy. And that will counteract any of that urushal oil that is going to give you that nasty rash and itch and things like that. This will also work on stinging nettle or anything else that's going to give you that uh, that itch or rash. So that's what uh, the jewelweed has its claim to fame is, is to counteract any of that. Flowers on the plant comes in two colors, either yellow, like we have here, or orange. Now what I found, the plants that have the orange flowers, the bugs just love to eat the leaves. So they'll be all eaten by the bugs. So I'm assuming that the plants with the orange flower have a little better tasting leaves than the uh, yellow flowered leaves, but when I eat them in the spring, they both taste good to me. One other thing, the plant gets its name jewelweed by dewdrops falling on the leaves in the early morning, because when you have dewdrops on the leaves, the sun comes down and it looks like there's silver jewel reflecting off the dewdrops on the leaves. Or you can take the leaf hold it under a running water in a stream, and again, you're gonna get the bubbles on the leaf, and that'll give you that jewel effect. So that's jewelweed. Keep it in mind if you ever get into poison ivy, and it'll save you from a lot of itching.